So Christmas week of 2014, I am sitting across from my 83-year-old widower father, Daddy Earl, in his walnut-paneled study down in Beaumont, Texas, where I grew up and he had lived his entire life. And I'm as nervous as a sodomite whore in church. <laughs> because I'm working up the nerve to finally ask him the question, are you gay, Daddy? And I was inspired to do so finally after years of wondering uh, a couple of years earlier when my husband and I saw the movie Beginners. And uh, it's about this 70-year-old man who comes out like a bolt of rainbow-colored chiffon to his son after the mother dies. And my husband said, Earl? And <laughs> I am junior to his senior. James Earl Brickhouse, his only child, living proof that he had sex at least once with my mother, Mama Jean, <laughs> in their 44-year marriage. And they never talked about sex, but they joked about it all the time, usually about their barren sex life, which I think ended early in their marriage. Daddy Earl, who did all the cooking, would hold up a wet noodle and say, my God, it reminds me of me. Mama Jean would heave a comedic sigh and say, oh, it's been so long, I think my hymen's grown back. <laughs> so after seeing that movie, I thought maybe he'd finally come out to me. And I had several visits down in Beaumont in that study with him, sitting across from each other, but I couldn't ask the question. But the Easter before this Christmas, we made major headway because I went down there and had him read my memoir. And he was so proud that I had become a writer because it was a talent that I got from him and he always wanted to write a book and he never did. And it was a memoir about my alcoholism and getting sober and about my sex life. And so while we were there, we opened up channels of conversation we hadn't had before. And he was uh, conservative and Catholic and he was also a drinker and he had never stopped drinking. But he also always accepted me for being gay. And he, uh, when I told him when I was in uh, freshman in college, his one bit of advice was, just don't march in those parades. <laughs> so we're down there and we're talking about the book and he's really intrigued by the fling I had with a priest. <laughs> and he said, you know, that man never should have gone into the priesthood if he knew he was gay. And I said, well, straight or gay, the deal is you're supposed to be celibate. And I said, <laughs> and I said, you know, I said, your mother used to say to me that she was worried when you were growing up that you were going to end up being a priest. Did you ever want to be a priest? No, I married your mother. And I could have asked, did you ever think you were gay? But I didn't. And... <sighs> Yeah, he married my mother, but he married her at age 35, which for his generation in that small town was late in life. And it wasn't like he'd been a playboy before her. I mean, he had about 2.5 girlfriends, all platonic, I later found out. So when I go down there for this Christmas, I'm like, I'm going to finally ask the question. And I'm thinking, you know what, I'll butter him up and I'll go to Mass with him one morning because he went to Mass every day. And I uh, hadn't been a practicing Catholic since college. So I get down there, but he's not feeling well. He's feeling like he's getting bronchitis. And uh, so he's sleeping in every day. So we don't go to mass. And I'm thinking, I could have a drink with him, but I'm not going to break my sobriety over this. But I'm not even tempted. Because he's not sick enough that we can't sit in the, con in, the, in the study and have a conversation. But he's not drinking because he's not feeling well. And so there we are across from each other. And I opened my mouth to say, do you think maybe you were gay? No, I loved your mother. I said, I know you loved her. It's not what I'm asking. But I think he loved her in the way that Will loved Grace. <laughs> and I said, do you think you were attracted to men? He said, well, I don't know, maybe, but you know... <sighs> I pushed those feelings aside a long time ago. I wanted to follow the church and have a family. And that's what I did. Now, enough of this talk. Change the channel from Fox News to TCM. 
There's an old Joan Crawford movie about to start. <laughs> but he never said that because I never asked the question. When I opened my mouth, the words wouldn't form. And I thought, you know what? He's not feeling well. I'll do it next visit. And he died five days later, unexpectedly, of respiratory failure. Underlying cause was delirium tremens, the DTs. He was an alcoholic, just like me, or I am, just like him. And I keep beating myself up for never asking the question. And I'm like, what does it matter what he was or wasn't? But it matters to me because who he was is a part of who I am. And he always accepted me. But did he never accept himself? Or did he accept himself and choose to lead a life that made sense to him? I look at it this way now. I am all the things he was but never quite became. Sober alcoholic, published writer, out gay man. I, James Earl Brickhouse Jr., and the full-blown version of my father. And I think he'd be proud of that. Thank you.